Welcome back to Weekly Daily Wednesdays, that midweek break where we sit back, relax, and take a look at things going on in Linux, open source, and all the other fun stuff. I am Vin Stone, that is Joe Bryant, and over there is one Pedro Mantegaeus, uh, and together with you, Hello. at home, joining us live, man, or maybe mm-hmm. watching after the fact. What's up, dude, yeah. people? Is it, <laughs> is it another great day for Linux? I think it is. Yeah, maybe, mm-hmm. kind of. Yes, it's always oh. a good day for Linux. Oh. <laughs> Happy I'll give Linux you enthusiasm. Wednesday. Um, <laughs> Happy Linux Wednesday, everyone. I have a cold. Woo-hoo. What's Jill's excuse? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't put me in that position, oh. man. Um, <laughs> hey, beautiful people. How's it going? Uh, been up to anything, Pedro, other than being sick? Uh, oh. No, not really. I'm Right now I'm running on tea and uh, paracetamol, so... Hey, <laughs> yeah, man, you, you're bringing it this week, Jill. You're, you're like, oh, oh, and I like what Kai Linux just said LWD woot, <laughs> woo. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, as you might remember from last week, I had that big interview with Big Daddy Linux on Linux Spotlight, and I just want to thank the many of you and 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 all of you who left such wonderful feedback for me on on YouTube, on Discord, on Twitter, and all the social medias. It was wonderful. And it's been a wonderful week. Squee! <laughs> Aw, thank Very you, good. Pedro. <laughs> That's dark. Uh, <laughs> I've been playing around with much stuff. Uh, setting up color space stuff with OBS. I'm still trying to... It's like three different ways. I, I think I'm going to have to break this how OBS basics into a multi-part thing because it's the people I've been feeding back off there. I get like 19 new questions. I'm like, okay, uh, which is good feedback because uh-huh. I, I don't know what people have questions about. So there's that. Also, uh, more on this later. I, I dug this thing out of the, like the basement. <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell nice. you what a Spider 3 is later on in the show. <laughs> yes. Stay tuned. But... I'm not going to say this is good news, but this this is uh, as much as we like to pick on GNOME, they do some cool mm-hmm. things. This is yes, definitely they do. one of them, because <laughs> GNOME is going to be fighting the good fight against a patent troll. <sighs> and, you know, we did talk about this. Uh, they came after, um, what was it, Pedro Shotwell, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. They went to that and, you know, like, hey, man, uh, this is using, you know, spin the wheel of intellectual property, you know, very vague patents. And uh, they're like, if you give us some money, we'll go away. Because, hey, that that's their business model. That, that's how this mm-hmm. worked with the whole um, company that was going around, you know, like MP3s and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so how that works is, like, you know, give us a, what do they say, a small uh, five-digit figure <laughs> well like, uh, they said yeah high five mm. digits high five digits man so sub six figure and we'll go mm-hmm. away well, it'll be fine and gnome's like yo man we don't think so you know we're gonna, we're gonna take this to court and we're gonna try to get it dismissed outright with prejudice so that means yep. that they can never oh, come back yeah. to another company mm-hmm. under the same guise yeah. of hey you can just give us some money and we'll go away Good on you, Gnome Foundation, because yes, it's going to cost a lot of money. Oh. It is. Mm-hmm. That's the business model because it's always cheaper to settle than it would be for you know a prolonged lawsuit. And the Gnome Foundation is doing the good. This isn't going to be cheap. This could be a very long thing. And they've set up a Gnome Patent Troll Defense Fund that if you've got a couple of what sneaky cash is laying around, maybe consider kicking those in. I threw him a few shackles. I did the same thing with the, uh, what is it? Pretend to law. I think that was the uh, podcast thing. And, you know, just, uh, it just mm. makes me angry. That, yeah. <laughs> yes. Have, have you changed your opinion on Gnome, Pedro? Uh, no. The, oh, Gnome is still a horrible, I horrible tried. desktop environment. But Shotwell, as a bit of software that's been kind of a staple of the Linux desktop experience for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It seems a bit weird that a patent troll would specifically go after that. But at the same time, I can sort of see that it would be a very good benchmark for those patent trolls to go, okay, if we can get away with this, 
that opens up a whole new realm of possibility when it comes to open source software that we can try and go after. So I I can see now that Gnome has decided to fight back and they're actually gathering money to fight them and get that patent dismissed that yeah. probably the copyright trolls right now are going okay we gotta drop this like right now right now and as quickly as possible <laughs> yeah they're, they're gonna that's what they do they get they're, they're going to take this to court i mean mm -hmm. they probably don't yeah. want a ruling on it because you know they're coming after Gnome because they've clearly went after people in the past. Like, hey, this is a good yep. one. This is vague enough to where we can go after all kinds of companies. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you done goofed. Jill. Yeah. So, and, you know, it, this is so sad. But every, everyone in Linux community is asking for your help and the Linux Foundation in fighting this patent troll. And help send a message to patent trolls everywhere that they should never target free software. And there's two links in the show show notes on, on ways you can donate. You can donate through credit card or PayPal. And if you can't donate monetarily, you know, spread the word on social media. And I actually, I donated yesterday and then spent, spread, spread the word. And that, that was great because it, it gets everyone, you know, seeing it and this needs to be taken care of and let's help the Gnome Foundation fight this. It's wonderful. I think that's pretty help. good. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully this is going to play out. Sorry to start off on such a bomb. Uh, I know. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll get happier, I promise. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's actually good that they're fighting it. Well, let's get yes. over the AWS doing something good for open source. Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Amazon is now offering AWS promotional credits to open source projects, which will help with the cost involved in using the AWS cloud and free up resources for open source projects to further expand and innovate in their communities. And, you know, this is great because Amazon is being a good steward in the community and at the same time knows that this will increase their revenue because these are open source project used, developed and tested, of course, on their platform. And uh, they are growing, of course, all these open source projects and AWS. And uh, some of the recipients are the Linux Foundation's Cloud Native C Computing Foundation, which includes Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Envoy open source projects. And also the Rust language and the Julia language designed for high performance computing are recipients also. So that was, that was really, really great of AWS. And this is awesome to help yeah. support those open source projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, a while back, I wouldn't have seen Amazon doing something like this. But then when you put it in context, it's like, oh, yeah, Microsoft bought Kid, uh, GitHub. And now yes. they basically turned GitHub into a way for people to crowdfund their favorite mm -hmm. developers or the developers who did uh that bit of software that really saved your life that one time and you kind of want to give back to them so yeah microsoft's little play on github has uh had a, a bit of an impact uh i mean it's still comparatively speaking uh it's still minor for amazon's like yeah you get some uh some <laughs> uh, promotional credits from us but they were forced to do something and yes. good on you microsoft good on you amazon yes you did yes. good. <laughs> Yay. The enemy of my Yay. enemy. Is that what you're trying to yeah. say? <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it. I mean, that could be helpful. I mean, uh, I yeah. scored over looking at the application thing. It's like, is there any way I can spin this? Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. I could hmm. Oh, no, okay. not, not without being extremely yeah. dodgy. I'm like, all I need you to do is give me free bandwidth. Because I have my Amazon <laughs> AWS account. Yes. And that, that's ultimately, ultimately, I was like, does making Linux videos help? Probably not. Anyway, I don't want to waste anyone's time, including my own, of like trying to come up with an application for it. But that's something to look into. Uh, yes. 100%, and I don't see how it could hurt anything. Oh, no. <laughs> unlike, unlike this uh. next story that is <laughs> going to remind you that maybe maybe you need to get away from the computer Pedro. Mm -hmm. maybe or maybe it'll actually be a bit <laughs> surprising to find that you've been running something that you completely forgot about for years now and it's been taking up some screen time and this one it comes from uh 
CUNY Devs <laughs> uh, GitLab, and it's called Workflow. And basically what it does is it's a screen time monitor app for Linux. And you can see there's a little window there and it's like Chrome, 50 minutes, uh, get it, 32 minutes, workflow.py. 13 minutes. So mm -hmm. yeah, you can see exactly how long something has been running on your system. And it's kind of interesting. Although in my case, I'm pretty sure Steam is the one that uh, wins, at least on this box, because I turn it on and it auto starts <laughs> yeah. and it just stays on unless there's an update. That's the only point where it goes down and then immediately comes back up. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at this. <laughs> okay, it's available as a flat hub, so it doesn't cost you anything yep. to try it, man. Um, yeah. I was like, maybe I'll try that. And I said, no. I was like, why not, other Vin? It's like, we don't need an application to shame us. And I was like, well, fair enough. <laughs> Very true. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and also, you know, this, this does make it a lot easier than setting up lots of, uh, of uh, fancy cron jobs. So that definitely would make it easier. And um, uh, I know on my broadcasting rig, um, I auto start with Discord, Steam, Pavu Control, Vivaldi, Chromium, and Xterm always. So th that would be a tie with all them. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I don't even. So it's just measuring what's running the longest with an active. Yeah. <laughs> There's an active window on screen and it <laughs> gives you the time of how long that uh, window was there or is there. <laughs> Yeah, that's just gonna be a web browser for me, probably. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's Steam for me. Is that or the, like Discord, the then maybe Firefox. Yeah. Firefox. Mm -hmm. If it does terminal stuff, then yeah, like Nano or FFmpeg. Yeah, yeah. Well, the terminal. If you're just running it in the terminal, it'll just show up as whichever terminal, terminal emulator you're yeah. using. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I, I don't need anything to shame me. Maybe you, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that could be a thing. Good news, everyone. Humboldt 19 <laughs> is here nearly 15 years after the first release from Canonical. It's been around for a minute, hasn't it? You think about that? Yes. 15 years. Wow. It's amazing. Um, Exciting. <laughs> With this new hotness, we're going to be getting kernel 5.3, WPA3, Wi-Fi security, GNOME 334, and uh, the ability, if you do remember, but you will have the ability to run select 32-bit applications. Mm -hmm. I think this is also shipping with XFC 414. However, if you uh, just bought one of those hot, fancy, reasonably priced uh, RX 5700s, it's not going to work out of the box, Pedro. No, mm -hmm. no, you'll still, uh, just because it comes with uh, kernel 5.3, you still need uh, Mesa 19.3, which is not out in the stable branch yet. They do have, I think it's RC1 that's planned for the 31st of October or the 30th, something like that. And mm -hmm. the final candidate, so basically just the last uh, release candidate will be, I think it's November 20th according to the show notes, so that's probably from the Mesa calendar that I put that there. Uh, yeah, so you'll need that, which is probably a good idea to keep Padaka's uh, Git PPA at hand because that actually tracks the latest Git master. So if you have a 5700 or a 5700 XT, then you kind of want to be running that PPA for now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, as we talked about last week, Ubuntu 19.10, um, this release includes the ability to use the ZFS file system. Yay! And uh, thank you all out there who beta tested that. That was, uh, this is going to be great. And um, also, I have been play actually playing with Ubuntu Studio 19. 10 in the last few days and not only noticed the inclusion of our beloved OBS studio, but that it works with the live USB as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> that, that's pretty awesome to be able to stream it's from a, a snap, a isn't live. It? Actually, um, no, it was the, the, the full installed. Yeah. It doesn't oh, have okay. support right. for NVIDIA. Yeah. <laughs> that I don't know. It's, I didn't test it's it. It's the default. <laughs> You yeah, want it to should. probably not. Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it should, but it, it probably doesn't out of the box. And you know, I think this is just—it's amazing that Ubuntu is 15 years out, 15 years old. You remember 15 years ago when I first was using Ubuntu, I enjoyed the Telltale drums. 
<laughs> I can't do them very well. Use ah, that Debian system Brown startup. edition. <laughs> and hey, man, the Linux for there, there human beings. Thickening colors of purple in there too. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was that like, didn't to like six or seven. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's all a mushy blur. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, most importantly, Ubuntu brought an easy to install and use Debian derivative to Linux users and new users alike. So, you know, it's taken the world by storm with Linux. And congratulations to Martin Wimpress, who is the new Ubuntu desktop director at Canonical. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! So I know Wimpy will do an amazing job, and I'm sure he's going to bring all those progressive updates from Ubuntu Mate to the main Ubuntu. So looking forward to that. Really excited. And I'm very much looking forward to DRI 3 being on by default there, Wimpy. I'm with you on that <laughs> yes. one. Absolutely. Yes. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen, the new default window manager for the next release of Ubuntu. Ubuntu after stuff. <laughs> it is good that awesome. uh, it was kind of a mixed bag because you know initially with this this release was supposed to be you know no 32 bit multi arch, which strangely enough I was like good somebody's got mm -hmm. to start doing this and you're like ah uh, you know well after the all of entirety was like really. Like yeah, okay. including Valve yeah. is like okay. In that case, we're not supporting Linux. Uh, we're not supporting Ubuntu anymore. Yes, right. And <laughs> they, they, they do have a list of uh, thirty-two bit compatibility. And all I want to know, who at Canonical plays Quake Four? <laughs> Quake Four. <is> I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm guessing they just went off of the uh, games that Iculus ported. It's like, okay, what's the most recent? Uh, Quake I, I, Four, I, right? Okay. I mean, I see Quake Wars, <laughs> but I was just like scrolling down Libcurl, 418 Nvidia, you know, SDL to mm -hmm. Quake Four. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not, nothing wrong with that. I just got questions, man. Uh, Aww. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Uh, Samsung. Yes. Uh, yeah. Dex. So this is sad. Uh, Samsung is stopping its Linux support for DeX on Android 10, which has been in beta for quite some time, De DeX on Linux. And it allows you to turn your Samsung phone into a PC. And I actually know a lot of people in our community who will be sad about this, including Linux Gnuru in our chat, who uh, uh, joyously uh, posted in our Discord about how much he was enjoying it. So I know he's going to be sad about this. <laughs> And, you know, this is sad because it doesn't work on Samsung, but of course you can run Ubuntu Touch by UB ports on several devices that you can buy inexpensively from eBay or Amazon, including a OnePlus One, which I owned, and a Nexus 5. So you can use other options, but just you, you can't use that one on Samsung <laughs> devices. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was the last and only reason that I had to even consider a Samsung phone. And mm -hmm. I don't anymore, mm -hmm. so thanks for that, Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and it makes mm -hmm. sense. Uh, with uh, Android 10, they, uh, Google did say that they were going to le uh, release like a desktop uh, version if you had it docked to an external monitor. So yeah. it makes sense that it would kind of go away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dream, right? You come home, yeah. you plug in your phone, uh, you got an external GPU connected to some monitors, and it's your computer now, right? Mm -hmm. Dex was the first one to Did, actually legitimize yeah. that. You mm -hmm. see, I know we've talked about this, like, for me... I have a workstation and my general computing device are tablets. Yeah. <laughs> Cause laptops. It, well, you know, mine's kind of like a laptop without the, you know, my keyboard detaches. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's smaller and has better battery life and, you know, other things, but here's the <laughs> thing, uh, like that whole, the, the concept of being able, like something that would be portable, that would be useful for, to me, outside of like browsing the web, Google Docs, you know, media consumption, it's going to be another decade before that's going to be a real thing. Before I could get any actual, yeah, yeah use out of it. 
But that convergence mm -hmm. device, I mean, it's sad to see yeah. support going away, but I mean, it also says a lot to like whether or not the market demand is there for that anyway, because you think like two years ago, everybody was trying this, you know, yeah. Ubuntu phone, yeah. Firefox, mobile. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is going to be the next, like, it's not ready yet. And two years later, like, told you it wasn't ready yet. Uh, but that's one of those <laughs> things you don't want to be read about. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I know Aww. some people are going to get sad, but hey, look, it saved a lot of people some money. Cause they're like, I'm not going to buy that Samsung phone that I probably yes, wasn't going to buy in the first true. place. <laughs> oh. oh, and thank you, Art yeah. Theron, for that story. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about something everyone should do, but nobody doesn't. <laughs> All right, bring out the spider then. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you about Jimmy. Jimmy the spider. <laughs> <laughs> this comes from real Linux user, uh, com. All this is in our show notes, so go check that out after the fact. There'll be a link in the description where you find the show. This is something you should mm -hmm. do. I don't care if you're a professional photographer, image maker, if you edit videos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is all about that stupid picture oh, the of the dress. <laughs> yes, remember that. <laughs> But, you know, one of the things is so easy to do these days. And for me, not having color match screens, that would drive me up the wall. Now, here's a great mm -hmm. example I actually would encourage. I know most of you are listening on audio. But the image that's on screen, those two blocks are the same color. Put your finger between the two. Just, mm -hmm. nip, just do that. And you go, <laughs> that what? Works. Right. That's right. Your eye holes, not as accurate as you think they are. And you don't need anything wicked expensive to do this. Uh, this kind of walks through, you know, what is color management basic with color theories, you know, your RGBs, you know, if you're going to be doing Rec 706 or anything set up like that, it's not crazy. The end goal is to create that ICC profile for your monitor or monitors and just have it set up so you have color accuracy between everything. And it, uh, what are we using? Uh, do, do, do display Cal. Display Cal. Mm -hmm. It is incredibly mature it's, these days. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's not <laughs> much to it. You put it on even on like Debian, Debian 10, Debian stale. The only dependency I had to throw in here was WX Python, and it fired mm -hmm. right yeah. up. You walk through it, you stick it on, you monitor. Well, here, what you do is, uh, mm -hmm. let's see. You get one of these. These are old. Mm -hmm. This is battle hardened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I still have the box because this is one of the things you break out exactly every time you buy a new monitor. I don't know about you. I don't just show up every other week with a new monitor. The USB, you plug it in, you drop it on the monitor, you let it do its thing. Then you, then the hard part is you got to get into the monitor's configuration and start messing with your RGs and Bs and get that dialed in your contrast and brightness. You, it's going to give you those lines. It's going to give you an RGB. You, you try to get that lined up just so. Uh -huh. And once you do that, you say, okay, create my ICC. Then come back about an hour later. All right, don't do this in a hurry. But yeah. that's, that's the little <laughs> box that you'll get. And you just try to get mm -hmm. everything lined up. Nice. And everything's going to match across screens. Now, for me, the main reason I have these calibrated is when I'm working with like DaVinci, I'll have my edit window here, but I'll have a full screen preview over here on this 28 inch. And I need that to look the same in here, especially when I'm doing yeah. color grading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. You want your video again, you want your video to look like what it's supposed to look like, you know, if you're trying to yeah. set up anything. <laughs> and I understand that, what does this matter? I'm just using an NV12 color space, Rec 709 partial color. And then, okay, don't worry about it. If you don't know what that means, you probably don't have to worry about this either. All right, let's be honest. Modern monitors are usually like 98% sRGB accurate out of the mm -hmm. box. So if you just got one screen, you just got a laptop, it might not be that big a deal. Pedro, would you ever consider such lunacy? <laughs> uh, I would, actually, uh, because these two 1080p monitors that I have, uh, one on top of the other here, they... They're both the same model. I bought them at the same time, and when I plugged them in, one was blue, the other one was purple. So mm -hmm. <laughs> they did not come calibrated out of the factory whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I think someone looked at it and said, good enough, and done. So I spent about an hour trying to figure out, uh, there was a website that I went to that had like all the things, put that in full screen, go through the slides one by one, did it all, and then just replicated that. It's like, oh, now they actually look the same. Cool. Mm -hmm. 
That's good yeah. to do. And you'll definitely hear me. Um, I know I've complained about like the NVIDIA resetting my color profiles because mm. I'm in there dialing, you know, brightness, contrasts, and digital vibrance. And everything. still, it's just so it's not a hobby of mine. And these things are cheap. If you buy something new, it's going to cost you a lot. Go on Craigslist, mm -hmm. go on the eBay's. Yeah. <laughs> 30 bucks all day long. You could probably still mm -hmm. get them in a box. Collector's yeah. item. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I have the old Spider too, but I've also used uh, higher end ones like the Klein ones that we have at my work. And those are really nice because they actually beam a, a stream of light on the monitor. But th those are very expensive ones instead of the ones that hang on the monitor. So, um, but I've been doing this since the 80s as a computer graphics and animation artist and instructor. And um, yeah, it's crucial for multi-monitor setups uh, for doing artwork, editing, animation, video podcasting, and playing games. Especially when, when you want to play games spanning three monitors, you want them all to look the same. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> so that's what you want to keep in mind, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> It's not fun, but yeah, <laughs> it's something but it you, take... you will see the difference. Yeah. In fact, that yes. is all you will see because you will be looking at your monitor and now it looks better. Yeah, and <laughs> it, it's really, yeah, just a few, you know. I'm just gonna be honest with you because sometimes you can get a calibration, and you're like, oh, that doesn't look because you get used to looking at something a certain way. That's wrong, yeah. <laughs> this, this is yes. very important to do when a monitor is fresh out of the box because yes. if you go back and set it the way, it's like, why is it supposed to look like that? But I mean, you might be wanting to color calibrate it to a printer as well. So, yeah, mm -hmm. if you yeah. want to have those two match up, that's definitely something. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, good news, everyone. After you're done Yay! calibrating your monitor, you can finally use DaVinci Resolve. 16.1 is out. Available for Linux. It's also available for Windows. And the laughable thing is everyone on Windows and including Mac are having crash cities and issues with it. But then again, that's not where mm -hmm. the priorities lie. So what do we get in this? This is a nonlinear video editor, completely free to use. It's almost feature complete on Linux. Uh, we do have a couple of new things in this support for clipping indicator on the Fairlight mixer, which is good mm -hmm. because that's your audio thing. You'd like to know when you're clipping, you know, if they keep adding a few more things to Fairlight, mm -hmm. I might actually consider using it outside of it just mm -hmm. being a curiosity for me. There is support for a clean feed viewer um, in DaVinci Resolve Studio. And this is handy if you want video like I'm using on secondary monitor here which is out of shot i think you can just see the top of it so when i'm editing i can have a full screen preview now previously if you wanted to pull off that black magic uh you needed an output card now you could buy like a deck link output or you could use an intensity pro which is what i was using but now you can do it in software you don't need anything fancy for it you do need the studio version in order to use that some people are angry about that like my free program doesn't <laughs> even like what well, there's two ways to go about it um improved performance yes <laughs> for decoding 264 and h265 clips for amd graphics cards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh yeah i was very happy that this is fixed fixed because sometimes i would have issues with the h.264 codex uh, read speed and performance on my amd fire pro on one of my rendering r rigs although in the real world, I do not use compressed uh, um, compressed video or animation because I have to, you know, be as uncompressed and the highest quality as possible. So I don't normally need to use this, but I did notice that it did cause issues. With well, you can the totally have high compression yeah. lossless. Yeah, yeah, you can, but that's that's not what the studios want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that is a thing, and also. Um, this is a feature that was missing from DaVinci that I use heavily in Adobe Premiere, which is the ability to copy and paste transitions across multiple edit points in the timeline. Uh, that was a feature missing that I that I really have been wanting. And keyboard shortcuts for showing or hiding individual panels, um, which is awesome, increases speed of your workflow, and has been included in this version of DaVinci. Great. That wasn't there. Yeah. Even GIMP does that. Yeah, I know. I know. It was just something they never got around to. <laughs> All the okay. keyboard shortcuts. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, a couple of things I'm waiting for is I would still like uh, support for YouTube video to be able to bring that mm -hmm. in without having to transcode that. And there is an update to the boring detector, which is the thing they have in the cut page where it can analyze your uh, clips and see so it's like, it's a little slow right here. Because if you have the studio version, you can take advantage of the neural AI in engine for object uh, removal, uh, tracking, bunch of advanced things. So I was really awesome. happy with that. Was also, so pro tip, if you're using H.264.265 and you, uh, what was it, the um, a Fire Pro, generate optimized media. Don't don't try to use that directly with a Fire Pro. You're going to have a yeah. bad time, period. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so what do we have up next? Oh, Disney at the Happy Feel Good Disney. Company. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is <laughs> this is kind of ex expected. I, I'd always be I was always interested in, in getting a Disney Plus account, but never did. Um, the Disney Plus video streaming service does not work on Linux devices and gives actually error code eighty three in the Firefox and Chrome browsers. And um, oh, it's, snaps. <laughs> yeah, Stormtrooper is going to kill somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it seems that Disney uses the DRM solution Widevine to protect its streams from un unauthorized activity uh, like others do, other streaming services, but it is tuned to too strong of security level, unlike Netflix or Amazon F Prime, which work fine on Linux. And. Yeah. You know, you know, Disney, how do you expect your Linux animators, developers, and system sysadmins to watch your streamed products in-house? Oh, boy. Yeah, I guess they tell them to use the, the Disney Plus app on their tablets or phones. I mean, you know, how are they supposed to uh, watch what they're, <laughs> they're making? I'm going um, to summon my inner Blizzard developer. It's like, you all have phones, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. I could imagine if I was a Disney animator and they're like, yeah, we, we want you to take a look at that source material, smash down to the Why don't you just pull it up over the LAN in, in your yeah. player mm -hmm. and watch it? Directly. Exactly. <laughs> You know, it's uh, I don't think they're worried about DRM on their streaming service to take care of that. Um, yeah, literally terabytes and terabytes of data. <laughs> what I'm thinking about is when I saw this, I went, and? <laughs> I mean, how, how do yeah. we not already know this? I mean, this is, this is Netflix didn't work for the longest time. Amazon Prime didn't work for a minute. And mm -hmm. I fully expected this uh, when Disney said, hey, man, we're going to do a streaming service. I laughed. They're like, but we're going to have a Mandalorian. I shrugged. They're like, <laughs> you're going to get a Loki series of Tom. It's like, have the money. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, uh, people were uh, pissed at Firefox a while back because they included Widevine. Widevine is now a thing in Firefox. That's what lets you uh, see your Netflix and your um, Amazon Primes directly from Firefox. Because for the longest time, if you wanted to see anything from those streaming services on Linux, you'd need to use Chrome. But mm -hmm. yeah, and then Disney comes <laughs> out and it's like, yeah, no, it's not even going to work on Firefox. It's not going to work on Chrome. It's not going to work on Chrome OS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's a dick move. And it seems a bit hypocritical of Disney, you know, trillion dollar company or almost, uh, and other companies that make billions and billions of monies uh they rely on linux and open uh, uh other open source projects and then when it comes time to deliver on those platforms that they were so content to use to give them money nope nowhere to be seen mm -hmm. and uh jordan mm -hmm. uh actually left us a comment in the show notes it's like you can't be talking about the same disney that enriched themselves yeah. with adaptations <laughs> of famous public domain <laughs> works and then successfully lobbied to kill the public domain in many countries yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, sorry, that went there. to court to extend <laughs> copyright, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> just to protect the mouse. And the ironic thing is, was when they were having the um, slap fight with Sony, I'm like, you know, if you guys didn't do that last time, uh, the, the Spider Man would be in public domain and you wouldn't have to worry about this, right? 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 Mm -hmm. Ah. <laughs> this is a mouse, man. I mean, it, it's a corporation, it, it, it's out to make money. It's not out to be happy. But. I will say this. I don't watch things on the PC desktop. I don't. Um, I haven't in a long time. And I don't think most other people do either. I do. I play 
video games and I have video and I have Discord. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I spend my free time, man. <laughs> I will judge you on another episode, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, it, it's just Disney, though. I'm not making any excuses. I'm saying that as yeah. like, what did you expect? I mean, yeah, it was expected, well, but at the same time, it's like, it's yeah, so, so yeah. <laughs> Netflix works, Prime works. Why did you have to do that? 720p yeah. for Netflix. You can, there's a, an extension that enables 1080p mode. With draconian mm -hmm. DRM. <laughs> yeah. Oh, just leave that for I mean, The DRM is inevitable. The DRM <laughs> lives in your processor at this point. So, unless you're going yeah. to libreboot all the things, good luck. <laughs> yeah, Hulu used to do this as well. They have too tight a security, so it wouldn't work on their browsers. <laughs> oh, Hulu changed. had a thing where it wouldn't work on tablets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that's where Hulu lost me right then. And I was like, well, well, nope, I'm out. Because if I wanted something in the yeah. big screen, I'll just Chromecast it from a mobile device because it works. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, Netflix still doesn't work if you have a rooted uh, Android phone yeah. or tablet. You're full it of lies. Goes, uh -uh. It works just fine. <laughs> if you mask it, yes. I didn't mask yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it doesn't work on the uh, the Shield tablet. That's nice. <laughs> Both mine and Nori's, it's like Netflix just goes, and eh, no. I do not suffer this issue. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, yeah, well, each to their own. Maybe you're doing it wrong, Pedro. I brooded the, I used the official um, thing from Lineage. I'm just yeah. giving you a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you would like to help me give Pedro a hard time, you can, uh, how, how can you do that, Pedro? Is there a way to go about doing that? <laughs> well, there are several ways to do it. You can <laughs> shout at me over the internet, or you could actually uh, share uh, some of that uh, hard-earned money that you have kicking around and... Throw us a few shackles. Go to linuxgamecast.com uh, and hover over the uh, different multitude of support hover buttons that we have. It. Okay. Yes. I'm hovering. <laughs> yes. You get your Patreons, your LibraPays, merch, PayPal. Yes. Don't forget the merch. Uh, Store.linuxgamecast.com where we have some t-shirts and some stickers and some hoodies and mugs. There will be bathrooms Look, at we got some point. I was promised man. bathrooms. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta go creep on, creep on Pedro's Aww. wish list. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Tablet. I don't judge you for that. I don't judge you. That, 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 that's the monitor I was talking about in the pre-show. <laughs> I'm, I'm, go I'm going to judge you for this ridiculous gaming chair. Uh, uh, hey, it was Nicholas cheaper Cage when I put it there. Stock. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Basically, it's the shiny stuff i see it's like ooh, i might buy Aww. that and i put it on the wish yes. list so that's my wish list <laughs> i will judge you for the fake c64 hipster thing and Th yeah. that actually has a working keyboard supposedly we'll see in december yeah. when it comes out <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh if you want to wrap with us the rest of the week if you like hanging out with us man uh, we do have a discord that's available to all of our patreons and along with that uh you get access to early shows which is the thing we do uh, uh, we have uh, buy-ins, not really buy-ins, but like skip the line for our multiplayer fest and all that with the executive producers, access to our show notes and a gang of other stuff. And thanks mm -hmm. for making this possible. We don't have to do yep. commercials or anything like that. And yeah, you know, you might not like what we say, but we're not being paid off. Um, <laughs> you can be yeah. our bosses, names in the credits and all that. And if you want to support us, it's kind of brilliant. Just got a wish list too. I'm sure it's just filled with blinky crap and fuzzy Aww. things. Oh, there's some good stuff on there too. There, besides stuffed penguins, there's <laughs> fuzzy things. <laughs> yeah. Yes, there's a, a Ryzen CPU on there and blinky a mic, crap. a nice pink <laughs> mic. <laughs> Did you find a microphone with RGBs? No, I I wouldn't use that. No, oh, come on. <laughs> on my mic. Live a little. <laughs> I have a microphone have that shines on lasers else. directly into your eyes. <laughs> they make them. You think I'm joking? Somebody's like, yeah. Friend, that's that's ridiculous. I'm just like, no, no, they, they make microphones with the RGBs. No, it, it helps your gaming performance on Twitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I do suppose Uh-oh. we have to thank uh, Kai Linux yes. yeah. for the uh, Patreon yeah. support. Uh, thank you very much, Kai Linux. Yeah, he came back. Kind of awesome. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, and we couldn't keep the away from me, to- Pedro. Yeah. yeah, apparently. <laughs> well, we put the link to his. Uh, he does wonderful YouTube videos about Linux and Linux gaming as well. So we put that link. Just in do the a show search notes. on YouTube. You'll yes. Yeah, you'll yeah. find it. Yeah, Kai <laughs> Actually, Linux. Actually, if you just type Kai Linux uh, on Google, it's uh, right there at the top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that kind of brilliant? All right, a little bit slices of pie. Three point. Oh yeah. yeah. Boom. Cool. So <laughs> the first one is, um, well, they, they actually called it the Ponagachi. Yeah, and and it's a deep <laughs> reinforcement <great. laughs> uh, learning AI for Wi Fi poning. And yeah, it, it is yeah, exactly yep. valid right here. <laughs> the but why is a question that we ask a lot uh, in this particular segment of LWDW. The need factor usually does it. And this one has no, a I teeny tiny little right display. Here, <laughs> yes <laughs> it's cute as f uh but it's yeah it's got a teeny tiny little display where it puts some um like ascii emoji and some faces and it tells you exactly what's happening it's very very kawaii the way that they uh kind of put it on there and yeah it does exactly so what it says cute. on the tin it it I can would see set this thing on fire so quick <laughs> No, it can impossible. sit on a Wi-Fi, uh, like, not even attached to any Wi-Fi. It could just sit there, and it will sniff all the packets that come through and try to figure out exactly what to do next. And it does that automatically. It's got the, the whole learning AI bit. Uh, actually goes around and decides exactly what it should be doing at any given point based on the packets that it sniffs. It's very clever and not very likely to be spotted because if you look at it, it's a, it's a Pi Zero with a teeny tiny display. So if you make a nice case for it that looks like a phone, it's probably going to go unnoticed. <laughs> now people will be like, why is your phone on fire? <laughs> why is your phone on fire, Ben? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, Brad. Using AI Aww. to crack the BPA, man, um, it is running better cap, so it's mm-hmm. got that going for it. And I mean, you can cut the AI stuff off if you're not, you know, but it it gets bored. Like, this is, <laughs> this is a feature built into it. It, it. You look at it and be like, I'm bored. Take me somewhere new. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like I've figured out exactly what I can do with these. So, yeah, take me somewhere. <laughs> so, is this war weaving? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my first reaction Possibly? was a war, a war driving Tamagotchi <laughs> digital pet on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. That, that, there's just no bad. I mean, if you could, if you Aww. don't put a display on it, maybe it's tolerable. You could stomach it. Oh, but it's so I cute. think the display is uh, an interesting Fun. feature. <laughs> it is actually. <laughs> No. Yeah, no, it gives no. something that would yeah. otherwise be completely mundane and boring and turns it into a story that's actually worth covering well, in the size uh, of yeah. pie. Well, you think about this. I mean, if you, can I remove the display before torching it? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you torture Raspberry Pi Zero? <laughs> Listen, man. I got my reasons. <laughs> that's kind of brilliant. Um, there'd be something to play with. It'd be an interesting gift give you friends and be like oh it's so cute what is it oh just leave it in the house i'll be back next week <laughs> yeah and uh don't look at this month's internet uh bill just saying. <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> good point pedro <laughs> well pedro maybe if you don't want to war um you can just build your own cpu right no, oh, this is cool. yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you can. Uh, so uh, this particular story gave me flashbacks to, to second year university. Uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, this crazy, crazy person decided, you know, what's a good idea? Co- uh, Let's writing compile the code. an open source CPU inside an FPGA. Yep. Completely out of the box. Build everything from scratch and uh, dump it on an FPGA. And the insane person uh, that this person is. Why not uh, indeed, he said a month ago. Yeah. And dove into the abyss. (laughs) 
he goes on it's a very long post but he actually goes into detail with like everything and how he set up the uh virtualized environment to test it and exactly what he did uh, to try and get it to work and ideally uh, he actually mentions that the uh, the end of the article it they could actually get the uh fake uh sparkly on processor that he programmed address something like a gigabyte of uh, ram and actually handle multiple storage devices at once so basically not only did he start out with something that was completely crazy and completely <laughs> completely uh out there but he succeeded and yeah, seriously amazing. kudos major kudos yeah. because <laughs> i had to um uh, it was my final assignment for the operating systems course that I had in year two university. I had to um, basically code uh, the BIOS for a really old motherboard that they had there. And I got a decent grade. Uh, mostly I couldn't get, um, what was it? I think it was audio cards. It, it just didn't work if you plug those in. Uh, so I didn't get full marks, but... Yeah, it reading through this story is like, oh god, oh god, I need a cigarette right now. Mm. Oh wait, I quit that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> that even like dealing with Spark architecture. Uh, yeah. That aside, one I, I was scrolling through this. The reason I threw it into the show notes was just scrolling through and like, then I soldered the JTAG. I, I know those feels. Um, mm hmm. <laughs> that there, there's there's no backtracking once that you know, if you're jtagging or something you're like you're on a mission <laughs> you just are yeah <laughs> that again you know i like to throw things in that high linus wrong linus um <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were short a Canadian for this show, so there he is. Right. Uh, <laughs> completely of questionable use, but a very interesting learning experience and just raging insanity. And I'm a huge fan. Yeah. Of yeah. And like that he was using That's risk, crazy. too. That was cool. <laughs> that is kind of beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to bounce out of here. We're running a little bit late. Mm -hmm. But if you'd like to send us some feedback, we'll live on your feedback. How can they go about it, Pedro? You can do that very, very easily by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and fill okay. out the form. The only thing to look out for is the show box. Make sure you pick LWDW. Otherwise, you might end up sending some hate mail for that foul method uh, Saturday show, What We Do. But yeah, the, leave us your feedbacks. Chances are we said something that was completely um, wrong or something that you felt like we could have said some more. Or maybe <laughs> you're even crazier than that person who made... <laughs> their own spark <laughs> processor from scratch and uh <laughs> yeah let us know seriously let us know <laughs> that's gonna do it we gotta roll the credits okay. yeah that's awesome Yay! let me see if i can cue some music up. maybe i can do that maybe Our i can people. do that <laughs> the rb music nope maybe perhaps uh, there it is oh uh, there we go <laughs> yay oh thank you ben Stone again and Pedro Mateus again. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. Brian. <laughs> again. 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 And thank you to our executive producers, our beautiful executive producers and producers. So you guys are amazing and you make this happen. Thank you so much. We love you all. <laughs> Seriously, uh, this show was a Patreon goal and every single one of you have made sure that we keep doing it. Monsters. Awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay! 193. Can you believe that? <laughs> Almost Son, I have to edit them. Yes, I can. Yes. 